None of this is financial advice. Being an intellectual creates a lot of questions and no answers. Janis Joplin. This is Bob Chakravarti. He is Ripple's chief economist. He used to be the chief economist at the Clearinghouse, and prior to that, the Federal Reserve Bank of Chicago, and prior to that, the Federal Reserve Bank of Dallas. Before we get there, blockchain technology allows for the integration of separate networks across countries with their own standards and systems. For example, the internet is one system globally. You can uh, go to any site. However, with financial transactions, there are certain specific, specific requirements within each country. And as the last speaker talked about, standardization is very important. From the earliest days, Ripple has been partnering with banks, payment system service providers, and other financial institutions to expand and improve offering, offerings within the system. We believe that change can come from within the financial system. More recently, we've been working with payment service providers. Let me give you a couple of examples. We've worked with Bcash, it's one of our customers, which is the largest mobile wallet provider in Bangladesh, and helped them with remittances, specifically with the channel um, that they have. They have 36 million cus- consumers using their app. 90% were newly banked, which is quite impressive. Bob is an advisor at the Chakra Advisory Board. They participate in a World Bank Group project that is funded by the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. The project is to incentivize and encourage adoption of digital payments focusing on developing nations. The project is supposed to conclude in 2021. It's unclear if Bob still works at the Chakra Advisory Board, but in 2021, a few months ago, Bob now works for Ripple. It's funny Bob brings up Bcash. Bcash is a member of the World Bank Group, and it so happens that the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is an investor in Bcash. In 2018, Ant Financial also invested in Bcash. The Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation are currently using Mojo Loop, that is an open source technology that uses Ripple's Interledger protocol. Ant Financial was part of the Bally FinTech agenda, right along with Ripple. Bcash is a Ripple partner. Risks. The uh, cyber attacks are a reality, and there may be an issue of if you are um, poor, uneducated, or um, you don't have enough understanding of these risks, uh, you may be more exposed to them. And uh, the third uh, explanation may be the simplest, which is we haven't quite yet seen it working on a massive scale, so how do we know it's going to work? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm a very strong believer that advancing digital payments, access to digital services is a way of inclusion and one of the big motivations for the fund to support countries to move towards exploration of central bank digital currencies and stable coins is because we believe innovation and inclusion go hand in hand. But we are aware of the risks and we recognize that if we move without the right regulatory framework, trust can very quickly be eroded and there could be the pyramid falling impact uh, with long-term consequences. This is why we engage with our membership to prudently work through marrying innovation inclusion with safety and security. The IMF, the World Bank, the UN have SDGs or Sustainable Development Goals. They're pushing for adoption of technology for an inclusive economy. Today, correspondent banking relationships in these economies are costly and take forever. The OECD has projected that developing nations will account for nearly 60% of GDP by 2030. Now think about what ODL offers, instant cheap settlement. Melinda and I make a big bet that almost everyone will have a mobile money bank account. And this will help them save and borrow. It'll really empower them in a big way. But the question is, can this really get out to almost everyone? 
I uh, talk about Bangladesh, and there only 4% have one of these mobile money accounts. But in the Philippines, they got started earlier. They have 8%. On July 28, 2021, Ripple announces a live corridor between Japan and the Philippines. Give me an example back from the 1990s during my time at the Dallas Fed, where I used to study Mexican payment systems since we had some role uh, over Mexican banks and U.S. banks operating in Mexico. At the time, one of the large Mexican banks was charging 10% to cash a U.S. dollar check and putting six-week hold periods on it. When I asked why the bank was doing that, the answer was, well, because we could. And so there was opportunities, there was a lack of competition, and technology quite wasn't there. Things have certainly improved. The COVID-19 pandemic has further uh, to uh, taught us about the lack of effective payments infrastructure, especially the importance of an end-to-end -end digital one. Although digital solutions are gaining traction, cash is still popular. 60% of remittances today are not sent digitally. Our, our most active region for Ripple is Asia. Asian countries have historically been underserved by correspondent banking and have limited reach and expensive liquidity solutions. Bob knows the banking industry because he worked at the Fed. 10% costs on remittances from U.S. to Mexico simply because the banks can. The U.S. to Mexico is where Ripple and MoneyGram had their pilot. He sees what Ripple offers and that explains the sudden career change. The Asian regions don't even have access to correspondent banking relationships and when they do, it's costly. Yeah, first of all, it's already in play in the US. So, you know, the interesting thing about anything that's innovative, like digital currency, like crypto, is that it, it usually leads, it doesn't follow, right? Government is the mm -hmm. one that usually follows, not leads. And so the utility of how crypto is being applied is very different, right? For some people, whether it's Bitcoin or Ethereum, it's really more of, of a store of value. It's more of a commodity. For XRP, which is Ripple's crypto, yeah. it's the reason why I chose to join this board is it's the only one that really has a, an applied use, right? So it facilitates yeah. cross-border payments. Mm -hmm. And so it, it serves a, a very kind of practical function. It's used by financial institutions around the world. And so I, I see it as a great way to think about the next, you know, the evolution of money. Right. But in this case, again, how do we have something that that isn't just a market value? It actually has, it actually serves its purpose. And, and again, in this case, for those cross-border payments, it's made a huge difference in that world. Rosie Rios joins Ripple because she believes in the use case of XRP. She served as the 43rd treasurer of the U.S. and sees XRP as the next evolution in money. The activity across RippleNet, our payments network, uh, is non-U.S. activity. I'll also point out that even since the SEC has filed their lawsuit, we have signed over 20 new contracts with financial institutions around the world. So you know, now I will point out none of those have been here in the United States. And I think ultimately that's why I go back to this is an attack on crypto here in the United States. You know, there are lots of players that have chosen, lots of players in the crypto industry who have chosen to set up a domicile outside the United States. And I think one of the worst things that could happen, and I say this as a U.S. citizen and being based here in the United States, is this isn't good for the crypto industry here domestically. Look, anything that provides people options on mm -hmm. access to, to money, yeah. access to managing their money, access to different types of investments, I think is a good thing. As mm -hmm. long as there's a path, as long as there are a, a, a kind of a roadmap, if you will, and, and investor protections, then, then we're, I don't think anyone's in a position to stop innovation or stop creativity or stop job creation. But how do you start what I think is a much needed conversation mm -hmm. about, about, again, how to have these options available and have people protected at the same time. So, yes. so this is a delicate yes. balance that I'm sure many parts of the federal government are going to tackle and are tackling and have been thinking about for a while. Yeah. Okay, that's good to know. And I think they have the right people in place. I mean, I've known Gary Gensler for a long time, obviously the chair of the SEC, and I think he's the right person to start that conversation. Even with the SEC lawsuit, Ripple is moving forward across the globe, signing over 20 new contracts. The hot topic in Congress is crypto and central bank digital currencies. It's only a matter of time. You heard what Rosie said. She knows Gary very well. He's the man for the job. I think Swift could be sandbagging their answer. I think I, I very much agree with them. I think the whole capital markets as we know it is going to be transformed and is going to be digitized 10 years from now. 
Now, how that's going to look two or five years from now has yet to be seen, but the world is absolutely changing. Um, you know, all the analogies around the train has left the station, et cetera. It is undeniable in my mind that the world is going digital um, in terms of, of capital markets specifically, and that um, asset servicing as we know it will fundamentally change. There's no reason we have to have T plus two settlement uh, in the US or other than having been built on legacy infrastructure and architecture. Uh, there's also, I think, a vested interest in, in having a delayed settlement period. There's a lot of hands in the cookie jar who enjoy the float uh, over that time. And there are other fundamental reasons from a you know investor protection reason why having a delayed settlement can have merit. But I think fundamentally, our ecosystem in capital markets globally will operate much more efficiently and accrue to the benefit of end investors if we could utilize distributed ledger technology and blockchain technology across the board, if we can tokenize and digitize securities, non-security assets, bring greater transparency and liquidity to the marketplace, open up investable assets to a broader range of, of people and doing that in a very regulated and, and compliant way. I think the future is extremely bright. I think it's a super exciting time to be in this industry and I couldn't be happier uh, to be at the helm of standard custody. The capital markets are evolving and distributed ledgers and crypto assets will play a vital role. This tech is transformational and we are transitioning. I'm a victim of my own insides. There was a time when I wanted to know everything. It used to make me very unhappy, all that feeling. I just didn't know what to do with it. But now I've learned to make that feeling work for me. Janice Joplin. Thank you for liking, watching, and subscribing. If you enjoy my work and wish to support my channel, please consider joining my Patreon. Remember to hit the bell.